Good morning. I'm Shirley Womack, welcoming ministry staff here at First Rockwall United Methodist Church. I'm excited to welcome you to worship today. Let's join in. Good morning, and welcome to our service of worship here today at the First United Methodist Church of Rockwall, Texas. My name is Joe Poole, pastor of our church, and on behalf of our staff and congregation, I want to welcome you to this, our service of worship today. And to those of us that are worshiping online, thank you for being a part of this service and connecting to one another. This service is interactive every Sunday at 9 o'clock with our online pastor, Reverend Sandy Hurd. You can submit private prayer requests, see who is worshiping with you today, and engage the chat feature. It is accessible through our website. And our open door service with Reverend Katie Newsom is available at 11 o'clock every Sunday through Facebook Live. And you can let us know that you are worshiping with us today from your home or locale by texting to the number 94000, the message F-U-M-C-R, and it will let you register your attendance with us today. All of our worship services are recorded and accessible through our website, so please be a part of each and every service. Our church seeks to take Christ into our lives and out into the world, and there are many ways that we can get connected to Christ, to one another, and our community. For adults, we have numerous classes and small groups. Please visit our website for a complete listing of classes this winter. Um, we also have Methodism 101 with Reverend Sandy Hurd. We have Rhythms of Growth, Devotionals and Dialogue with Reverend Christina Hildebrand, and so much more. Our children's Sunday at Home kits are available for pickup at the entrance to Building A, and their online campus is available anytime. And our children's choir, youth, and confirmation classes will be meeting today. Now, the plan for our next normal outlines our phased re-entry back into our campus. We are having in-person worship at 9 and 11 o'clock for traditional, 11 o'clock for the open door service. What we ask is that you pre-register for those so that we can make special preparations for your participation at in-person worship. This helps us out. And y'all have been doing a great job of maintaining the protocols and keeping one another safe, and I'm grateful. Also, our ARC Preschool begins their enrollment online for next year, beginning February the 1st. Please go to the ARC website for more information. And next Sunday, we'll be sharing our programs and plans for Lent and Holy Week and Easter, and so stay tuned. And for today, a special announcement. On behalf of our Staff Parish Relations Committee, I announce the transition and departure of Vale Keck as our Director of Music and the Arts, uh, effective February the 21st. Vale is leaving our staff in order to honor family commitments that are pressing at this time, and we will be able to thank and honor her in the days ahead. Friends, I want to thank you for all the love and support you have given me during my time here serving First Rockwell UMC. My decision to leave was a very difficult one, but one that was made through a great deal of prayer. I am deeply grateful for the opportunities I've had to serve alongside you. I have enjoyed being a part of the music and the ministry of this church, and I will miss you greatly. As we begin to say goodbye in these days ahead, as you pray for me, I will continue to pray for you and for the good work of this church. Now, all of this information that I've shared is available on our website. If you need help making a connection to Christ, our church and community, then please reach out to us. If you know of somebody that is isolated and lonely and needs us to extend the love and grace of Jesus Christ to them, then please let us know and we will respond. And again, thank you for your presence in worship today. Let us pray. You are our light, O God. In your presence, our lives are illuminated, our way becomes clearer. Our own light comes from you, and we are able to shine with love and hope because you love us and give us reason to hope. Radiate through us with your Holy Spirit. 
healing the hurts of the past and giving us courage for the future. Give us clarity and peace as we worship you this day. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who came to reveal your light to the world. Amen. boys and girls, it's a uh, time for our sharing the gospel with children. So draw near to your mobile device, your computer screen, your television screen for this, our sharing the gospel with children. Hello boys and girls and good morning. And things may look a little bit different today because, you know, I thought I would just take it easy a bit. I thought I would just kind of hunker down in my rocking chair and just take a nap. And, but we're not called to do that. Instead, we are called to be active, to be engaged, to be God's disciples and the disciples of Christ in our world today. That's who we're called to be. No matter what our age, we are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ and to do the works of Christ in, in all ways, in all times, in all the good that we can. And so today I'm going to share a story about a man who thought he could relax and build big barns and sit in his rocking chair and just take it easy. But God was calling him to be and to do so much more. And so listen for the story of the man who had full barns and a rocking chair. So let's put our hands together and let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for these, your children. Continue to safeguard them and we pray for their protection. And watch over our families and be with those who guide us in the faith. And we give you thanks for your lessons that come to us through the Bible. And so bless us, O Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, and I'll, I'll see you next week. Nah. As we come to our time of offering today, I want to thank you for your continued giving in support of Christ in and through our church, through your faithful giving. There are many ways that we can give and live a generous life. We can drop off or mail our offerings to the church. We can also make use of the black offering boxes for our tithes and gifts that are located throughout our campus. And you can also go to our website and go to the Give tab, and it is safe and secure. And you can text to the number 94000, the message, F-U-M-C-R, and hit send, and it will take you to our online giving platform that is safe and secure. We have several impacting missions coming during the season of Lent. We'll be announcing those and more next Sunday. 
And this week we have received our stewardship and pledge information for 2021 entitled Earn, Save, Give that is based on John Wesley's guidance for generosity. Please review the information and return your pledge cards beginning today, and you can drop those in those black offering boxes or drop them by or mail them in as well. As I have mentioned, we will not be deterred by the pandemic in addressing the most basic human needs of those in our community and in our world, and we have been able to be engaged in concrete acts of kindness and generosity because of your faithful giving. We are also able to continue broadcasting our worship services every Sunday, and your giving has made that possible. Thank you for all that you do. Let's pray. Dear God, we truly give you thanks that we can be a part of what is good in this world. And so we dedicate and lift up our offerings, gifts, and tithes to you. Receive them. Multiply their use and effectiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. We give thanks for the gift of prayer that unites us together as the body of Christ and draws us nearer to God. As we pray, we remember all those who are hospitalized. We particularly remember Ed Wheeler. And we pray for those who were discharged from area hospitals, Dale Cherry and Jim Chancellor and Ken Bernal. We pray for the family of Peggy Meyer upon her death. Services will be held this summer in Georgia. And we pray for Natalie Harper and family upon the death of her husband, Ron Harper. Services were held here in our sanctuary on Thursday. We also lift up Don Braswell upon the death of his brother, Paul. Services were held this past week in Lubbock. We pray for all those who have COVID. We pray for their caregivers who are making difficult decisions on their behalf. And we pray for our medical professionals. We also pray for our president, our world leaders, the men and women who serve in our military, as well as our first responders. Would you join with me as we pray together? Loving God, we give you thanks that you welcome us with open arms. You watch over us while we grieve and comfort us in times of need. You give us hope in times of doubt and love in times of sadness, faith in times of confusion. And so help us, O oh God, during this time of quiet reflection to remember the calling that you have placed on each one of us, to shine light in the darkness, to offer peace in the storm, to be the salt. Help us to remember our people and our places where the needs are great and the ache is strong, where chemo treatments continue, where hunger persists, where families are falling apart. Loving God, we pray for those things we struggle with, for the conflict we feel within ourselves and between us and those we love. We pray for guidance and compassion, for the opening of a path forward. Some of us, O oh God, are facing serious physical problems and are in need of healing. Others need healing of a different kind, emotional and spiritual. Some are facing family problems. Some are weary with the struggles of life and seek assurance that this will someday pass. Others face financial difficulties and are facing difficult decisions for themselves and their families. Holy God, we also lift to you all those things that give us joy and hope for those things that we trust in, believe in, and will sacrifice for, we give you thanks. Hear us now as we, your children, pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. We waited for this day. We've gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with you're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our brain. 
descending like a cloud. You're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. A mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens. A mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Today, we conclude our three-part series on our reflections on 2020, the tumultuous year that in, involved COVID and the election and racial inequality and the economy and jobs and, and also launching 2021. As we begin, it seems to be another challenging year. Now, we have never wavered in our efforts to address human need and our spiritual needs of community, of connection, of inclusion, and generosity. We have considered Jesus walking on the water in the midst of the storm and Peter walking on the water toward Jesus, and how often we feel like we are in a storm, wave after wave coming over us, and yet we're still afloat, and we are focused on Jesus and Jesus never lets the faithful sink. And last week, we considered the extravagance of the widow's offering two small copper coins and Jesus' invitation to engage in extravagant love, extravagant grace, and extravagant giving. And Jesus calls us to respond. And so for today, there are several layers to our story within a story in Luke's gospel. And so we must be careful in our pursuing security in a time of uncertainty, and we must be careful about becoming too confident in the world that we have created around ourselves, and we must be careful of the intent of our heart. And so listen to these words from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, beginning with verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? Then he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man had produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. 
I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. And may God bless the reading, the hearing, and doing of this God's holy word. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus was teaching in a crowd when all of a sudden someone shouts out, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. In this one little phrase, we have a host of issues. You have two quarreling brothers whose parents have died and the estate is tied up. Jewish law left the oldest son in charge of everything. And obviously, the younger brother is raising the request. Family quarrels when money is involved and estates remain unsettled or the most destructive of quarrels. Pitting brother against brother, sister against sister, money, annuities, land, mineral rights, home, cars, other assets, even the family Bible, furniture, jewelry, and clothes have been the subject of quarrels among family members. As an example, Vicki Lynn Marshall, also known as Anna Nicole Smith, was 26 when she married 89-year-old billionaire oil man J. Howard Marshall II. And she married for love, of course, and he died 13 months later in 2006. And there was an estate battle with his son, and he died in 2007. And then Anna Nicole died, and the pass-through estate of $49 million passed through to her then six-year-old daughter. Michael Jackson died in 2009, and his estate went to the Michael Jackson Family Trust. The net asset value was $236 million. 20% of his future innings from the point of his death go to 39 different charities, which to date have paid over $350 million, more than the value of his original estate, which has made $1.75 billion since he died. Now, James Gandolfini died in Italy, and he had in his will that the estate taxes must be paid prior to being dispersed. And that's a pity because there are rules in place that don't allow for that, but because he had it in his will, he shortchanged his wife out of $3 million in the pass-through of the estate to his surviving spouse. And lastly, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's not even dead yet, and he has given $31 billion to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and he's not even dead. Estates, wills, probates, pass-throughs, trustees, executors, executrix, and trusts, it's all complicated business and serious business. And I encourage everyone to save your loved ones some grief and get a will. Get a will today. Now Jesus refuses to be pulled into and triangulated into this mess as a teacher or judge or arbitrator. And Jesus says, take care, be on guard, guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Take care, be proactive, preventative, preemptive to ensure that greed does not have a home or a place in our hearts. And then as Jesus sa says this, he begins to tell a story in response to this quarrelsome younger brother. A rich man's land produced abundant crops. What will I do, he says, I will pull down my barns and I will build bigger ones. I will store my grain and goods and I will say to my soul, Soul, I have enough for years. 
relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God responds, you fool, this night you will die, and who will get your stuff? And Jesus concludes, so it goes with those who store up treasure only for themselves and are not rich toward God. And so, I mean, really, what, what, what's the big deal here? I mean, really, who can blame this guy? He had a good year. He builds on his wealth. Is God punishing this man or preventing his selfishness? Or is there something more? And then something occurred to me. Um, I have preached this text a dozen times, and I've never caught the fact that the man in the parable never fulfilled his dream. He never had the chance to complete his plan. And he said, I I will pull down and build bigger. I, I will store up. I will relax. And he never fulfilled his intent. And so the thing that I've noticed in a question that is raised, and, and it, 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 it's kind of bothersome, and, and I hope you wrestle with it too. Um, and the question is, does God intervene based on our intent? Does God intervene based on our intent? It's only a parable. I know it's only a story that Jesus told, but it contains so much truth. And this is a good question to ask ourselves, what is our intent? Which means what is in our heart? And that's a tricky question that one must ask because God knows our heart and knows us better than we even know ourselves. And so what is our intent with our possessions? What is our intent with our success, our affluence, What is our intent with our influence? What is our intent with our abundance? I mean, really, what was the man's intent? What was he trying to do? What was he trying to accomplish? I mean, he he was already rich. Jesus made a point of telling us that. And so rich is always relative, I know, but as the man in talking about his intent... Um, He uses five my's and six I's in his intent. My, 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 I, 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 I. He he is so self-focused. Never once does he even address you, us, or even God. I wonder how the story would have been different if the man had said, you know, I've had a great year and I've had abundant crops and I will share with others. I will feed the poor. I will help the undeserved. I I, I will help in any way that I can. I wonder how the story would have ended differently instead of saying, you know, my barns are full, and so I, I will share with all who have need. I wonder if the story Jesus told would have ended differently. And so the question for us this week is, what is in our heart? What is in our heart? It's no secret that we've been talking about extravagant generosity, the type of generosity that is an outpouring of our love for God, the type that partners with God for a greater purpose, where our giving becomes the greatest delight in our lives. Extravagant generosity changes our world because it changes us. Because Jesus invites us to significance rather than success. Jesus invites us to a life of significance rather than success. A life of balance, a life of meaning, a life of reflection, a life of self-awareness, a life of service, and a life of generosity. So in our lives... Unlike the man in our story, we might find significance rather than success and excess and self-centeredness. Jesus' words are cautionary. He says, watch out, be on guard. This is how it may be with you and take care. They were helpful words then and they are helpful words now. Amen. Let us pray. Indeed, may we be on guard, O Lord, against all kinds of greed, and yet how easy it is to forget your will and way. 
Continue to guide us into extravagant giving. Guide us into addressing the human needs that are all around us. May we never be caught in the me and I statements. May it always be you, O Lord. For it is in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen. And now for the rest of the story. Do you remember how our story began? There were two quarreling brothers. But in typical expected Luke writing, Luke does not finish the story. We also see this in the parable of the prodigal son, and he leaves that story for us to finish. And so I encourage you to finish this story in your mind. So did the younger brother go home with a new heart and a new intent? Or maybe he went home and found himself a cheap lawyer and a friendly judge and sued his brother. Maybe since the father had died, who knows? As Jesus was telling this story, was this story, the man's story, who brought the request to Jesus? Was the man in the story who was complaining about his older brother, had he just experienced the loss of his dad? And Jesus knew his story and was telling his story, and that's why the man never responds. And so, in other words, Jesus was trying to save this younger brother from himself, from his anger, from his greed, from his desire to take what was owed him or take what was not owed him. And so what we see is that Jesus was trying to save this man from himself. And Jesus does the same thing with us. He saves us from ourselves. And that makes all the difference. And it's not a bad thing for us to hear. Amen. As we prepare to conclude our service of worship today, it is my joy to announce that last Sunday, John and Amanda Webb and their children, Adam and Matthew, joined our congregation through our open door worship service. Welcome, John and Amanda Webb. If you would seek to profess faith in Christ or you would seek to join this community of faith, our church, then I invite you to contact Shirley Womack or any of our staff, and we will help guide you into and in a faith relationship with Jesus Christ. We have many who are joining our church who have been worshiping with us online, and some of those people have never even been in our sanctuary or church, but as soon as the pandemic is through and the vaccination is widespread, they will be here to join you in worship. 
And so if you would seek to join our church, profess faith in Christ, contact Shirley Womack, any of our staff, and we will be a part of your journey of faith in Jesus Christ. And so receive now this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord God lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. joining us today in worship. We hope you all have a great week. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Bye now.